we have heard for a number of years about people who are in what's called the sandwich generation. It's those people who are caring for their children as they're growing up and at the same time dealing with aging parents. Well, as the years go on, the challenge becomes greater. People live longer. We have more ways to heal the body. Um, and yet there are diseases that come with being a senior more and more people being diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, and more people are finding themselves in the position of being the caregiver. So where does the average person learn what to do as a caregiver, and maybe more importantly, who cares for the caregiver? Well, in South Florida, we are very fortunate to have Lisa's Place. This is a very special place at Memorial Hospital Pembroke, founded by Lisa Gibbons, who found herself in this situation when her mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And we're fortunate to have the founder herself, Lisa Gibbons, to talk to us today about Lisa's Place and how it came about. Lisa's Place grew out of my personal story when my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease after her mother, my granny, had also died of the disease. And still, we pulled the covers up over our heads and didn't want to see it. But our family realized through this journey that what, what do we wish we had? What would have made it better for us? And that's what we created in the world, a place to feel safe where we could kind of exhale and say, I'm falling apart. I'm unraveling. I don't know what to do. I'm angry. I'm afraid. I need help, and a place to gather with other people who get it to say, hang on a minute, we're going to help you through this, and you're going to be okay. You know, you're so busy anyway, aside from any kind of caregiver role. You know, you've got your talk show, Lisa. You, you've got a book out, Take Two. You've got a Facebook page to deal with. You're all over the place. So for you being as busy as you are, what was it like to be hit with this needing to be a caregiver and adding that into everything else that you do? It was a tsunami of pain and overwhelm, as it is for everyone listening who can relate to that now. It stops you in your tracks because, you know, we kind of go through our um, our facade of feeling very powerful in our own lives, of you know, being able to make things happen. Mm -hmm. Um, As women, especially, we're the CEOs of our family, and we make things happen. And in business, we, you know, we we make things happen. We keep moving ever forward. Um, For me, the reality of, hang on a minute, this steel magnolia in my life, this rock, the woman who's been the compass for me and my siblings and my dad, how is this happening and how can I not figure it out? But it was... Um, as brutal as it was, uh, it was also a, a beautiful opportunity for, for me and my family. We, we learned a lot about how much we could take, which was more than we thought, how much we could give, which was more than we thought. And all of it, every time we express our understanding of this disease and of the caregiving experience, we, we feel that that's a way to really honor the strength of my mom. We're lucky that you chose Memorial Hospital Pembroke as a site for Elisa's place. Why Memorial? Well, we're like-minded. Um, it's a very supportive, community-minded outreach of really dedicated people. It has been just a hand-in-glove, a perfect fit. And under the very skillful leadership of Bonnie Bonomo and our beautiful team of, of, of volunteers over there. Um, I just can't say enough about the love. And, and you know, we, when we opened the doors, it immediately, um, the people, the guests in our community took ownership. And that's how it should be. And, um, you know, when there's bad weather in town, uh, as is often the case, um, our community will gather together at Lisa's place. And when there's a celebration, when there's a death, when there's a transformation, they gather together at Lisa's place. And um, I just find it to be so beautifully rewarding, and um, and Memorial has just been an outstanding partner that recognizes that on the continuum of care, um, caregiving is a very serious and important part of the equation. Yeah, that's so true. Well, we're going to spend the rest of the program talking to some folks at Memorial and let our listeners know more about how they can access the services and the benefits of Lisa's Place. Um, but I can't thank you enough for your time. It's such an honor, and uh, 
a privilege to be able to tell this story, and we're so happy being part of the community and uh, truly, truly appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Now, nobody can really talk about it unless they've been there. And so to tell us more about Lisa's Place from the viewpoint of someone who goes there as a caregiver and someone who runs it with a whole lot of heart, I am very happy to welcome the director of Lisa's Place, Bonnie Bonomo. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Ellen. And someone who is um, very familiar with their services uh, in a position as a caregiver himself, Bill Plotter. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. Um, Bonnie, how did you become involved with Lisa's Place? It's an interesting story, Ellen. I, I spent the better part of three years being a caregiver myself to my husband who passed 13 years ago uh, with cancer. And along that journey, I figured out that I had a gift. And the gift I had was advocating for him when he was sick. And I learned that it takes a special kind of person to really keep knocking on those doors and getting those answers until you're satisfied and understand what's happening with your loved one. Because that information is not readily forthcoming from um, a lot of places. So I decided uh, after he passed that I would, in my life, do something for either cancer families or caregivers. Okay, now you did not have a medical background. No. And there was no one who was doing what you were doing for your husband. There was no one who was doing it. If there was, if there was someone, I did not find them or could not find them. <laughs> I knocked on a lot of doors, I have to tell you. Okay. And I, I afterwards, after the disease process and after I kind of transitioned myself and my kids, I really thought to myself, you know, there has to be a job out there where I can be a liaison for a physician's office, where I could talk to families and help them get through this journey. What do you find as uh, the person who's running Lisa's Place when people are coming to you and they walk in, I'm a caregiver, I don't know what to do. What's the first thing that they need assistance with? It's very different dependent upon who's walking in and where they are along that continuum of care for their loved one. You know, we get people at Lisa's Place who are already in crisis, Mm -hmm. which is a very different approach than those who come in looking for, I just got a diagnosis, what does this mean? But typically, the first thing I ask them to do is come in and meet with me. Okay. Because in a meeting, I can I can determine and assess and evaluate where they are so I can set them on the right path. What's the range of services, then, that people come to Lisa's Place for? Lisa's Place really runs the gamut. So you can come to Lisa's Place to connect for a support group. You can come to Lisa's Place to get educated about whatever specific disease you're dealing with. You come to Lisa's Place because you have no clue how to deal with the behaviors that you're experiencing in the home. And really, uh, Ellen, you come to Lisa's Place to connect. You connect with other caregivers, which is probably the most important thing that you'll find is that... You know, there's a biological family, a family you're born into. Mm -hmm. At Lisa's Place, you create your support network and a family who gets it. Now, you mentioned, uh, depending on the specific disease that they're dealing with, you may give different recommendations. So it's not just for people who are caregiving loved ones who have Alzheimer's disease. That is correct. Originally, because Lisa's story, you know, Lisa started this journey because her mom had Alzheimer's disease Mm -hmm. and she wanted to tell her story and make it count. So we originally started as a center dedicated to Alzheimer's and dementia caregivers, anybody with a cognitive loss. But what we found out very quickly is that regardless of the disease state, caregivers are overwhelmed, time starved, depleted, need to go to to find answers, need help, and um, someone who can provide them with some hope. So we morphed our program uh, into the needs of the market, and the needs of the market are to take care of caregivers. So that's how we became a place for caregivers. And there's no way to really spot a caregiver. They don't, you know, wear a big C on, on their chest. It's just the everyday person who happens to have found themselves in a position of needing to take care of a loved one, whether it's because there is no insurance or there's no home health care, 